Hey guys, me again with the second video of the night. Alright, the first one was the L85, and that was a pretty short video because it's kind of like a standard uh, gun, basically. There's not much detail that went into it. However, the second gun is going to be the complete reverse of that. The second gun is going to be a Master Edition weapon, and it's been one that I've teased once or twice before on the channel, and I just haven't gotten around to doing a video because I, I really wanted to wait until I got screen recording software to show off the amount of detail that went into it. So the first thing that we're going to look at is this part of it. This is uh, a few hours into it, a little bit of work, and we're going to kind of see like an evolution of progress go into this. So here's kind of like the second image of it. As you can see, I started working on the kind of like the back ass section of it where the uh, butt plate is and where it kind of curves down into your magazine release and your uh, grip. Then I went ahead and built the magazine and started kind of lining up how uh, everything was going to connect into one another and set up. And then we got the kind of like the top of the upper receiver done as well. Um, seriously, guys, if you don't know what gun this is, this is obviously the Ripper. Uh, this is indeed the Master Edition Ripper. I've already built the Ripper before, and I saw some YouTube comments talking about people's being like the best that they've seen on YouTube. And I knew very well I could quash those claims, and this is by far probably the best on YouTube that can exist, basically, because this is just such a good model. Uh, then we went into building the front foregrip after your upper receiver section and I kind of lined up how all the holes were going to set up with one another so that we could get it uh, working together. Then we kind of finished off the frame of it. There's still like a, one more main uh, support section uh, between these two here that we got to do but for the most part this is what the finished ripper looks like. Then we finish off the main section here, added a little bit of detail in other places, and uh, got the kind of like the final um, little bits of it done and completed. Just to prove that this does indeed collapse into one another as it should, this is what it looks like collapsed uh, into one another. As you can see, it is way shorter. Um, my original ripper had a kind of like a a toggle of only six studs and it didn't make it into the proper ripper this one has a toggle of about eight studs so it can really go out there and then really come back in um, deeper so this here you might not even notice but I added the rail system here on the other side as well and then added in the um, charging handle the main screen recoil and then the bolt itself back here uh, I believe I also added this maybe I don't know I honestly can't remember what I added at this time I do know that I added this top plate here because there is a top plate here over the uh, support housing here so that is another thing uh, and then the toggle that I was talking about this beam here is eight studs this is um, eight studs as well this is eight studs and then this is also eight studs but then you have the angle here and the angle here to worry about as well so that's just a little bit more complicated right there and then the final, like the final uh, version of it has these sights on it and everything. And then I looked up some pixel art of the Call of Duty Ghosts um, mask and went ahead and made a plate for it that looks just like this. So this is what the Ripper Mastery Edition looks like. This is by far one of the best mocks that I've ever built up until today because today I finished the Locust Sniper F4 from Black Ops 3 and that is looking fantastic. So here is what the final ripper looks like in um, Pauvre to LDD, and then we're going to go ahead and open it up into LDD. I had it open on the side here. I don't know why I did that. So here it is, and I did fix the controls from last video, so don't worry, that is working. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of the side panel. That's just proof that I did indeed do it in uh, LDD. And... <laughs> look at it guys this is the complete ripper it is a fantastic looking model it's definitely one of my greatest and i'm very very proud to call this my own this is probably by far one of the greatest models i've ever built um, so we're going to go ahead and get right into it this is going to be a super super long video guys bear with me there's so much detail that was jam-packed into this and i just 
I want to talk about it all basically. I don't want to skimp myself out on all the details and things like that. So just kind of like bear with me on that. So we're going to start with, I guess, the buttstock because that's basically where we can start. So as you can see here, it's kind of like a really big curve to it, real nice kind of curves out, but not, it's a, it's a subtle curve. It's not like a huge, huge curve and things like that. And like a nice real round curve on the bottom here. This is like a very subtle type thing, uh, but it looks fantastic. I'm, I'm really good with uh, this. Um, now then all of this chunk starting from this corner all the way around to about there and then back up to the side over here and whatnot. It's all side panel work. Um, this isn't actual studs hanging off the side. These are all side panels as you can see the studs right there. So this is all side panel work. Uh, so this was really hard to do. There was a lot of different things that went into this but it looks fantastic in the end so just wanted to point that out. Here we have the little kind of like the recess area that you have. There's like a gray bar on the inside of it. There's certain angles that go into it. Um, and then there's two screws here. Got all of that in there. It's really nice to look at. Um, I thought about putting studs on the inside or the flat tiles on the inside where these studs are, but where these angles are right here, I didn't uh, really have an option to put a, a stud there that would kind of cover up the angle. So you'd see like flat tile here, but there'd be studs open here. So I just decided to leave the studs in there. Um, I will point out that these bricks are turned upright. So you have complete sideward, sideways bricks here, and then these bricks are turned upright. Um, so that's kind of like, there was a lot of complex techniques that went into making this model what it is. Um, down here, this is not the magazine release. I don't know what this is, but it is there on the model. This was kind of hard to do. Uh, because of like I had side building techniques. I didn't really have uh, any studs to put this on So this was kind of hard to do, but it turned out really nice in the end. I really like how this turned out um, Another thing that I'll, I'll point out while I'm down here This is a three stud wide magazine. The original ripper I had was only a two stud wide magazine But it looks so much better with a three stud wide magazine um, That's why the curves are the way they are because with three studs the traditional method that I do uh, to get magazines curved doesn't work because of uh, how it's how I do it. Um, in real life, this would work basically the exact same way I do it in um, normally, but because this is LDD, I'm limited on how I could possibly do these types of curves. So this is a nice, really nice curve to it. It's got like a, such a smooth. Uh, transition to it. It's not blocky or jaggy or anything like that. So that's really nice. Um, another thing is like all the detail down here was really hard to do. Uh, there was an exposed stud here because there had to be because of this beam that uh, comes up. Um, so it's like it's really nice to have this. Uh, this is a working magazine release. This was probably one of the more difficult things because of all the room that I didn't have to work with because these are shaped upwards in an angle and then this is also shaped upwards in an angle so the only real place that I had to put where the magazine release pivots on is right here so what I had to do was basically design a rod that came down this way and then the magazine release kind of pivots on uh, how it, it kind of comes up in an L like this and then it pivots on the point here instead of here so that that was kind of difficult to do but I got it to work and it looks really really nice so it's pretty legit. You can kind of see like in the, the spec here, the black on the inside. And then right here, you can see like the black as well. Uh, and then this kind of curves out this way just a little bit to lock in. So that's really nice. Moving on into where your thumb hole is. Um, this was kind of like an ugly area. I didn't really want it to look like this. I wanted it to be more smooth and streamlined, but this works, so I had to go with it because I was getting fed up with it with how many hours I put into it. Uh, so when you're, since I'm a right-handed, it's going to be more on this side. When your hand touches down here, this all kind of curves out instead of poking into you, which is like massive square block. So that's why this is here. Uh, there's a curve along the back here as well. And then there's a curve here. This is a stud higher. So it kind of makes like a circle here. It doesn't really matter on the back strap. 
this is where it matters the most. This was kind of a pain to do. There is a black line in the grip that I wanted to do. And as you can see, getting it to look like this was just massive hell on earth. This was incredibly difficult to do, but it paid off so well. So happy with how I got this to work. Um, this is circled on the back as well. The studs are, this is a stud higher so that it feels good on your hand when you hold on to it. And then this is a kind of like a back strap. Uh, kind of ignore the openness that you see here, please. And then the trigger is a working trigger, except it won't work on a rubber band. This is more atoned for like a mechanical pencil or pen spring that kind of sits in the back here in a uh, like an open stud and then it kind of connects into the back of the trigger here. That's basically how this trigger works, but it is a working trigger. It does move in and out. It just needs a spring on the inside of it to uh, make it reset instead of a normal rubber band. So that is a really nice feature that I wanted to add. And I managed to get down. And look at the, the shaping here. It was incredibly, incredibly difficult to accomplish. This was by far one of the greatest feats of the entire model itself. Uh, just the, the general shaping here and the trigger guard or the uh, kind of like where the trigger rests. Uh, and then the one, the band kind of sticks out a little bit. And then you have one finger sit here and then two fingers sit down here. I know for a fact I can get a finger here and a finger here. The other finger is going to roll down here just a little bit. So that's something you might want to keep in mind with uh, how small this ripper actually is. This is a really small model. This thumb hole is plenty big enough. I know the first one that I made was kind of small for me because I built it in real life and then put my thumb through it. And it was like, eh, not so good. But this is definitely adequate enough for uh, everything. Another thing that I want to point out is the, the lines, kind of like how this transitions from the, the gray here into the white. This is a line on uh, any model that you look up. It's like an angled line. So that's a really nice thing that I was able to do. And the only way I was able to do that is if I hide this piece is using angled bricks like that that are turned sideways. So that was incredibly difficult to do, uh, but it looks so good in the long run. So I just wanted to point that out and gloat a little bit about it because that was a fantastic thing to do. We'll move on into the grip. Here's the first uh, support beam. This is kind of the main one. The, uh, top and bottom one are the main ones. This is the one that it slides on in LDD so I can move it back and forth when I need to. If I want to show you guys how this collapses, I will delete these two bricks here where it locks into place and then move um, this entire section front off the model. And then I'll uh, reinsert these two and then I'll move it back and then it'll look better. But uh, or I'll collapse it so that it's in the uh, SMG position, but I don't want to do that because that is kind of a pain, uh, especially with the charging handle here. You guys have already seen the image of it collapsed all the way, so you know. Um, so yeah, the top of this is curved, real nice, and then it makes a seamless transition into this here. And this part as well is just like an extra insurance to get to the lock. It doesn't. Um, fold up into this part of the model. It's actually jagged on, or it's rigid on this side. It folds this way into the model. This is all hollow here. This part's hollow here. This is hollow up here, and this is hollow up here. So it comes back into the model instead of these coming forward, if that makes any sense, because that's kind of technical speak that probably none of you understood. Um, something really awesome about this model is the front grip here. I did my best to capture the angles as much as possible. This is probably one of the more comfortable looking grips that I've ever done. As you can see, these are jaggered by like one extra stud or uh, staggered by one extra stud so that when you put your fingers on them, it's a lot, lot nicer feeling because it curves instead of just like a straight line here. There's a little bit of room for your fingers to curve around. There's a lot of room in the back for your fingers to curve around, especially coming up into this area here. But on the front here, where it kind of really matters the most, you get some of the nicer curves. So your thumb comes up in this area, your pointer finger comes here, and then your other fingers will roll around here in this bottom part. So that was really difficult to do. All of this is built with uh, side pieces, as you can see. 
all the way down through here, all the way down through here, all the way down to there, and then all the way down to basically right here. That's all side pieces. Uh, it was really difficult going up to kind of like right here uh, because of how you have to blend these into one another, but it looks really, really good. And then the top here is also built with side studs as well. Not this part here in the back strap, but this part here. And then it finally ends right about here because it touches into uh, where it needs to be more rigid to support the brace right here that folds up into the back here. So we're going to go back this way onto our shell ejection port. The shell ejection port is on both sides and this is this is the one part of the mock that I kind of regret. To get it in line with how big the magazine is and things like that, the shell ejection port has to be eight studs. That's like accurate to the game and whatnot. However, in order to get the shell ejection port to open up entirely as it's supposed to, you would have to have eight studs worth of room in the back here. And in truth, I only have two studs worth of room. The shell ejection port does work on this model, but it only opens up two studs. So when this opens, you can only see through it two studs. So that's kind of a disappointment. That's the one drawback of this model because my original ripper had a fully working one. And the way that I accomplished that was I closed off the shell ejection port uh, extra two studs up here so that when you pulled it back, it opened all the way properly. Uh, unfortunately, um, that I just, and this model, I had, I couldn't do that. So that that's one drawback of this model. Shell ejection port does work. It does open. It just does it two studs instead of the eight full studs that it needs to, if that makes any sense. Here's uh, some of the detail. This is the brass deflector on this side. And then this is the brass deflector on this side. There are two circles on them. I don't know what the circles do, but they are there. Top of the cheek rest here, super angle to it. And then flat on top, just to give it like a really nice feeling to it for uh, the shooter. So that's just something nice. Give me one second. Someone wants me to uh, play Smite with them, and I'm telling them I'm recording YouTube videos, so I can't do it right now. I don't know what this is, but if it was like, if I want to guess, I would say that this is a sling attachment point, but at the same time, I'm kind of confused because that's kind of what this looks like as well. This little jut out on the side, this is another part of the detail of uh, the Ripper. That, kind of what this looks like as well so i i don't know like why there'd be one here and then like four inches away there'd be another one sticking out here i don't know why that's there it's there i decided to put it in and that's about as game accurate as i get that area so another little kind of like a, a detail thing is that on both sides actually um both sides are pretty much identical aside from this side. This side doesn't have that black sling attachment that you see here or like the orange dot. This has the, I want to call this like ribbing uh, down the side of it that you can see. Uh, these circles here had to be done so I could get the angle here. So that's that's why that's there. And then it's black on the inside, don't know why. And then it has like a really uh, an indention right here, which is made with uh, sideways pieces. So that that's kind of like a nice thing to do. Uh, same on this side as well, except this side has some orange thing. I don't know what the orange thing's from or for. It's just there. Here in this is kind of like where I have to kind of like delegate kind of. There's ribbing here and then ribbing here. And the reason this is here is it kind of like it goes over your charging handle and the track that it runs in. Now then the weird thing about this is when this collapses together, open up the downloads. It has to connect like this. And look at the flawless seams in uh, collapsing together, by the way, like absolute no space here, no space here, no space there, no space up here, all flawless, incredibly hard to do. Just appreciate it, guys. This was a super hard model, one of the best, if not the best on YouTube. So. I just wanted to point out that this is the ribbing all together. It looks like this, and it is on uh, the models that you see in game and whatnot. So wanted to point that out. Um, up here, we have like a kind of like a shroud that comes over the 
I want to call this one the main support one. This one on my model is the main support one. This one honestly doesn't support anything at all. This one's just for detail, but this has like a cover over it on the main support one. And this one was, I wanted to do the the ribbing again like I did on the original one because it looked good. And there's two side by side because it's a four stud instead of the two like all the other ones are. So this one looks really, really nice. Really like the look of it. And then these side panels are to cover up like the hole that you can see here because there is a hole. And these do come all the way back to about here. Um, so that's kind of like how it is basically. Um, on the back here, as you can see, it comes up into this top uh, support beam, support brace, whatever you want to call it. It has the rail system up on top of it. This is where I designed the sights. Uh, right now they're in, I want to say this is assault rifle mode, which has the, uh, like the dot in the center of it. And that's why this side is a darker green. And then when you switched over to um, SMG mode, which is possible on my model. You just kind of, it kind of turns on the, uh, the open stud there. And then you take this side as well. Flip it that way, put it like that. And then you get the back sight, and then the front sight actually flips up in game. It, there is a front sight, it just flips up. You guys can't see it because the back sight's kind of block it a little bit. So the front sight would flip up like that, and then you would have your SMG sights just like that. So that's uh, pretty cool. That that's like it was a hard thing to do. I had to go kind of look at a bunch of uh, aim down sights videos to see how. It would work but basically you would boom and then that happens first and then your front one would pop up in front of it but there's like a few milliseconds worth of time between that event happening so it's really hard to see I had to slow down footage and things like that so yep main brace here and then you have your your front part here this one has like all the detail that's needed in it because it kind of like it goes down to two studs here when the models four studs uh, things like that a full rail on this side and then half a rail on this side and then some weird white thing I don't know why this thing is here, but it's there. So I had to design it and build it the charging handle Really nice charging handle really like how I designed this one And that's connected to this operating rod which is connected to the bolt by this operating rod and this is the exact same system that my other ripper uses. Um, it's complicated to explain to you. Basically, this is glued to the operating rod so that this delegates where the operating rod is. So when you collapse this, this and the operating rod collapse into a hollow bolt. So you can move this in multiple places and your operating rod but you're not having to switch operating rods because of the rigidity, things like that. It basically moves how you want to move it into the bolt or out of the bolt, depending on how you want the weapon to set up. Um, that's, it's complicated to explain, but if I showed you how it worked in real life using actual pieces, you'd understand then. So too bad I can't do that. I apologize. And basically the last detail that we got to talk about is the barrel. So there's the angles here that come up like this and then the end of the barrel itself and that's it. That is the Master Edition Ripper. So thank you guys so much for staying around and watching all of this. My favorite image is probably this one here uh, with it collapsed. I really like, or this one's not collapsed, my bad. Oop. Escape. Close. This is probably my favorite image because of just how short it is, even though the iron sights are, or the uh, charging handle operating rod and bolt aren't on this one. But this one looks so good folded up, now nice and compact in its SMG stance. And then it looks amazing in its assault rifle stance, but I like the SMG mode more. So that's something that's really unique about this type of model. I did 
so many hours into this model that I kind of got into the funk of I just did not want to build anything else after it. I think we're approaching like 15, 20 minutes on this video. If you guys stuck around to the end of this video, I want you guys to know that there is a special website that I'm working on that is going to be the kind of like the successor to my original website, bluejaythemeister.weebly.com, called uh Blue Jay with carbon.weebly.com, which is carbon is like the new system that Weebly uses. I'm going to try to make that website the new bluejay.weebly.com or bluejaythemeister.weebly.com because on that the carbon website, I'm doing all images of my gun models as rendered images. I'm not doing it as just screenshots with only like four images from in uh, LVD. Now I'm doing it all rendered images so it looks really, really nice. There's only one gun on it. I've only updated it like once, but it is public. If you guys stuck around to the end, you're um, kind of like your, I, I want to say prize is to go check out bluejaywithcarbon.weebly.com. Uh, check that out. Give me your feedback on it. And thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to comment, rate, and subscribe for more videos similar to this one. If you guys enjoyed it, don't be afraid to leave a like. Thanks for watching.